Let's can uh, hopefully my audio is good. We are live. This is welcome. Welcome to the Axial Honcho Budget Build. This will be week 12. And this week, yes, we are doing it a little bit differently. I have decided to do this one live. So I re decided to do this one live for a couple of reasons. This week, we are talking about a subject that is usually the least interesting part of one of the budget builds, uh, or at least not least interesting, but almost something that we, uh, it's hard to accomplish well, and that is servos on the on this build. So the last weekend that I took this truck out, I ended up finally taking out that tactic servo. Now the, that tactic servo lasted me as long as I thought it, uh, it could have lasted, but it, it finally ate it. So the gears in that were gone, I needed to replace it. Now, that's where it becomes sticky with the budget builds. And it's been that way on every single budget build that I've ever done. And that is always trying to find a servo that fits in our budget without just having a bunch of super boring weeks. So this week, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the servos. I'm gonna discuss a handful of different options for servos. And then I actually already put a new servo in this truck and I installed the incision steering link that we held out of the build from before. So I installed that this week because I also threw the new servo in there and I decided that I could get that replaced at that same time then. This week, we're going to go over all of this and then once we've covered the servo portion of this, we're gonna turn it just into a live video but we're gonna keep it as focused on the Axial Honcho as we can. So, the biggest thing about servos is that to get a proper servo, they're expensive the you know you want a good amount of torque you need some speed but you want strength in the gears now i am not a fan of inexpensive servos just because i think that the servo that you put in a car changes the experience of driving the car more than almost any other part of your car you know a good motor is a big upgrade and a lot of fun and things like that but even a cheap motor it gets the job done. You know, you can get down the rocks. Now, a cheap servo, though, I, I don't find it to be the same situation. So the servo that, you know, if you almost have no money as, you know, I'm not saying that money and no option because I think it's still a, a you know valuable servo for what it is. But the Fataba S9157 SV servo is the servo that I choose when I'm just putting the servo that I want into a car. However, the retail on that servo is $149. That is an expensive servo and not something that I expect everybody who's trying to follow a budget build style format to do. So instead, there, there's also a few options. However, there's a few things that I have had good luck with and bad luck with in some servos that I just don't like in general. Now, one of the better servos on a fairly decent budget is the ProTech 130T servo. That servo hits almost 300 ounce inches if you're running six volts. It hits over 300 ounce inches if you're running 7.4. That's a really good servo. Now, the other, some of the other servo, Sadox servos are some of the, you know, uh, more affordable style servos. However, I do not like running Sadox servos. I personally won't run Sadox. Uh, a lot of people have good luck with them. I do not. So um, let's see. Hopefully, my audio is still uh, is still fine. Sorry, I was trying. The plan was to run a, a secondary mic, but that mic did not function. So we're going to abandon that. So Sadox servos are not something that I personally run but it's up to you you know that's another thing of the budget builds servos are such a personal preference thing also savix servos are a little bit larger larger you might run into spacing issues with what you need to then place underneath of the servo to tight because the scx 10 has extremely tight tolerances in between the servo horn and that pan hard link it's just another thing to look at so the protec 130t runs 89.99 it's not the cheapest servo, but I think that it's a reasonable value for the money. There is obviously cheaper servos. You can buy $30 servos, $20 servos. Servos are one of those things you kind of get what you pay for. And I 
my best suggestion is is save until you absolutely that's as much as you want to spend and get the best servo that you can afford for your car because it's the one it it changes the way the car feels when you're running a servo that is proper you know not proper i i at the same time i, I do get a little bit uh picky when i'm talking about it and it's something that i've ran really nice servos for a really long time and i expect a lot out of my servos and out of every car that i run so that is kind of how I wanted to approach the servo thing in here. We're going to wipe out my entire budget, uh, you know, just by suggesting a $89 servo for a 130T ProTech. But even then, that would be the servo that I would I would push you all to at least spend that much. But the, I will also try and find some other options that I think might be, you know, might be reasonable. At this point, that is about as far into a normal budget build video as this one's going to get. We are going to turn this into a, uh, I'm going to turn it into as much question and answer about the honcho as possible. We're going to try and keep people on track as we can, questions pointed at this truck, and go from there. Hopefully, that makes this video slightly, you know, entertaining for those of you to watch. It may not fit your normal Wednesday morning routine. If you're watching these budget build videos every Wednesday, like uh, I, we, Matt and I both hope you are. Matt has a much more standard video this week with much uh, more production value to it. So make sure to go check out Matt's video if you haven't watched it already. Like, like this video if you're watching now, if you enjoy it. Please subscribe if you aren't already. And thanks. You know, see you on the next one. And normal budget video, back into a live video. So there's no way I'm going to check, uh, be able to check all of the the super chat over there on the side, but we'll we'll get through it and try and get on there. Uh, what is the? Uh, let's see, did you? I did not get a Red Bull. I got some water. That's about it. Trying to help that. Um, oh, it's good idea. Let's see. Good luck with. So yeah, I mean, some people run a cheapy twenty dollars shirt. It's. Some people can. I, I just expect so much more out of a servo. I'm super picky. I want the right, this certain amount of power and speed and reliability and strong gears. Um, am I going to add weights to it? No, I, I'm, I do not add extra weight for the most part. Um, are chassis mount servos hard to install on first gen trail honchos? Yes, it is in a way because there's a lot, you have to do a lot of work to try and make sure that everything is in the right spot. Those axles are much larger and you have to do, you know, but we're going to try and keep this on this honcho. I know a lot of people have a lot of other trucks, but we're going to try and keep these questions focused to this honcho. Um, uh, what bearing kit am I using? So I have not replaced most of the bearings in this car yet. Um, I almost did that this week, though, because I have got a noisy right front squeaky bearing on the inner side of my knuckle. And this car is really quiet up to this point, but that bearing is, is causing noise. So in the following video, I may just do a new bearing kit throughout this thing using a set of Fast Steady bearings for the SCX-10 II. Um, shock mounts were what? Shock mounts were what again? Sorry, I don't know what you meant there. Uh, I am running the Vanquish shock hoops all the way around, if that's what you're asking. Oh, sorry, I did not see it. Um, what servo horn is the best? I stand behind the Vanquish servo horn. They're made from the best quality aluminum. I don't think anybody else stands behind uh, the quality of the aluminum as, as much as that. And then it's got a different design where the top side is not open. It uses a double clamping, but it's all on the one side. So it's got an, it's enclosed around the top rather than most clamping servo horns are split all the way through to try and get you that clamping. I really stand, I stand behind the Vanquish servo horns. I think, and they're priced right in line with the other options. So. Price for your dollar, I, they're one of the best. Um, let's see, uh, were the incision links a direct fit on your honcho? Yes, they, this is a standard 12.3 inch wheelbase, which is what the incision link set is, drops right onto the car. I did hold that uh, steering link off for a while while I was running the stock servo just to try and keep that as, uh, as dependable as possible and try and keep that stock servo as long, alive as long as I could. I took a nasty tumble with the honcho that weekend at the very end of my day, and uh, that is what finally ate the gears in that 
in that stock servo. Do you still have a 35 turn motor? In this car, we have replaced the stock motor with that Holmes uh, 16 turn Crawlmaster. And if you go back and watch that video, I explain how that 16 turn is actually about the same speed as a 35 turn. It, it talks about the number of slots in the armature and all that. Go back to that video if you want like a complete um, description of that. That This motor is very smooth. It's much smoother than a normal 35 turn. That's why I went with the 16 turn Crawlmaster. Uh, what shocks am I going to put on the truck? Eventually, I will replace the shocks with some of the new incision shocks. Um, but right now, I have, uh, I'm have i just running the stock shocks, blown out seals in this right or left front especially. Let's see. What size Vanquish servo horn? I am running the 20 millimeter, not the 24 millimeter. Um, inner transmission gears, are you going to put all metal gears. So I am. Right now, I have left the plastic ones. So far, they're still running pretty well with that stock brush power. I will definitely change those at some point. A lot of people who got this honcho, though, were lucky and got the new metal gears, but I wouldn't expect that to be the case always. <clears throat> I think that you may find uh, these trucks go to the plastic gears like they were supposed to come with before uh, at some point. Um, have I tried the new Tekken servos yet? I have not. I've had them in hand um, from one of the other guys here, Michael Fan, who had them, but I have not ran them myself yet. Uh, would you replace the plastic idler gear in the transmission? Or uh, I would. I never replace just one gear. Um, I always replace the full set, even though that top one is already metal. You know, some people just replace the bottom two. However, that top one's centered metal, which is weaker. Uh, even the ones that are all metal from axial are centered, and that top gear is weak. So. If that top center gear breaks, even if you have two other machined gears, you'll end up eating up those other two gears just because you saved a little bit of money and didn't replace all three. So replace all three gears is my recommendation whenever you're replacing the transmission gears in your honcho. Um, since it is set up as a waterproof and ready, would you recommend servo-wise to keep the truck waterproof? So uh, the Fataba servos that I like are all waterproof. Almost all Fataba servos are waterproof from the factory. They're not advertised that way, but if you go in and look at their specs, they all say waterproof. You just have to look. Um, so the server that I have in there, Fataba S9170, 9157, is waterproof. Sorry, 9177 SV is what I'm running. It's an expensive servo. But, um, you know, as far as other waterproof servos, Again, waterproofing is not something that I pay as much attention to. I don't like, I don't run in water in, intentionally. Um, and even in most cases, a non waterproof servo in an SCX 10 2, you know, unless you're submarine your truck. If you're submarine your truck, I don't find some, I just, I, I don't get that. It's not my type of thing. So um, on your rear shocks, what was the reason for having them at such a hard angle versus doing it in the front instead? Um, <clears throat> so with this truck, Leaning them down quite a bit, it just, this truck is very stiff out of the box. Uh, that rear does not, you know, it, it moved around a little bit. What we did is we took the harder springs from the front shocks and put them on the rear shocks, but then laid them down. So that gives us a softer front suspension. And it gives us, right now we took those hard springs, they're back here, but they're laid down. So it decreases the effectiveness of the spring rate, gives us a little bit um, firmer set up than just you know using the stock springs and laying them down that far but it just makes this car work pretty well overall it's just a decent setup i flipped them like that specifically though because then with the exact same body mounts that come in them i could keep the same body holes now we run in the flip your lid kit i'm not using those rear body holes at all so it's kind of a null and void but it still works out overall this thing crawls really well um Let's see. Uh, how durable are those tires? Will they perform well through the whole lifespan? How durable? I don't know what you mean. I mean, tears, rips, punctures, things like that. I've had no bad experience uh, with any of my, my Proline tires. I, I run a lot of different brands. I, I ran these because of the looks. I wanted that all-terrain look with this. And the terrain that I'm on around here has a lot of grip. These tires actually do really well. Um, and it's... I actually don't see any like 
don't see a lot of wear on them. You know, I don't even see like a lot of leading edge uh, rounding or anything like that. And I've got a good amount of runtime on them, but you know, I'm just running a brush motor. It's not that heavy of a truck. Um, let's see. Um, I'm, I love my TRX4. Looking for something 13 year daughter around me. The, the honcho shirt. Um, let's see. Uh, I just got the incision links. And thank you for shock hoops for my 16 inch JK. Brian Honcho. Can't wait. Good. Um, what did I say was the best foam set? So, uh, foams on this one will be or right away. Um, Crawler Innovations, Little Novas, with a medium compound uh, foam on the outside of them on the front and the soft compound on the rear. That is my preferred setup. I think that you'll find that pretty good. That's what the, the two-stage setup works really well. Um, no, I want you uh, are you going to post the live video after? Yes, the live video will become, it'll just post up like normal video. Um, let's see. Thought, so I, like I said, I'm, there's other questions. This is, I'm gonna try and keep this video on the questions specifically to like the honcho. That, that's what we're gonna try and stay with at this point. Um, would you swap out the plastic center drive shafts out? And if so, what would you use? So for, Quite a, you'll get quite a bit of runtime out of the Axial Wild Boar HDs. I think that you know you can run those, run them until they're in, you know, until you start to notice any twisting or things like that. Overall, though, stock truck, stock weight, things like that. Wild Boar HDs are a really good drive shaft, um, you know, and there isn't a huge rush to change those out. They're not like drive shafts of you know, you know, quite a while ago when we had drive shafts that were not not that strong out of the box. These are actually a solid drive shaft, do pretty well. No rush to go change those out. Um, can you show the charger and how do you charge? Uh, I don't have my charger in here or anything like that, so I can't. Um, let's see, what are your thoughts? Uh, sorry. Would you install the new incision? I'd like to see how they perform. Uh, I will, but since it's the budget build format, in almost mo in most cases, I like to try and stay as close to the format as possible. So I, I'm not just going to throw them on unless until I have the right weeks to actually install them. Um, so for right now, we're gonna we're gonna keep jumping around with these uh, these leaking leaking front shocks on here, but it'll eventually get get proper shocks. Um, how many more shows do you figure you're out the SX Honcho? I don't know. It, I don't know how long Matt and I are going to take this series yet. When it's just me, I can kind of make uh, a decision at a whim on when I'm going to end the series or just stop doing a video or then start to spread out videos, things like that. Um, so I don't know how long it's going to go. I think Matt and I are probably going to have that discussion before too long because we both have a lot of other projects, and this series is a lot of work. So it's... Uh, we just we got to make that decision. So before too long, we'll address that. We will see. Um, so I will put links to the servos and all those things in the description below. Um, as we, uh, you know, once this video is done, I'll fill out the description just like a normal video. All the links to all of the things will be there. You guys will be able to see um, some of the more affordable options. And then, you know, if you've got the extra budget to spend, you know, some of the options that I would I would prefer if you know so that's uh, let's see just got my honcho on Saturday on Saturday and love it already I have plenty of upgrades in the mail I think all of us are usually that way spare tire uh, I no, I don't like running spare tires normally I just it's extra weight in the back I don't I want to keep my bias kind of where I you know I don't like adding extra weight just for the sake of extra you know now I get the spare tires of scale detail and things like that, but it's not it's not something that I'm interested in adding. So I actually like the clean bed that this honcho comes with over the old honcho body that had the uh, spare tire spot. So I actually like the change that they made. Rock jocks or F9s? I'm an F9 fan. 
I just like F9. I like fabricated housings in real life. Um, it's I like that's the style I like. So that's a it's just a brown shoes or black shoes though. Which one do you like better? Um, am I gonna throw on some night customs grill? Yes. I am going to put that grill in. I like that grill. I am concerned about how beat up I'm going to make it. It's hard to show in video, but this truck is, see, I'm, the light is kind of blowing out a lot of my details, but um, it's that light's a little bright. This truck is actually pretty thrashed. Um, you know, I, I beat this thing pretty hard. These corners are all, you know, even even the sticker there, it's you know it's rubbed off, and so we're gonna see how it holds up and how long I can go with it. But I am gonna install a Knight's custom grill. I think it's, I think it was cool, and I I, I like the detail. So I'm gonna throw that on there. Uh, it's already been it's already been ordered, so we'll see that before too long. Um, oh, last time I ran this was in the sand, and I got so much sand <laughs> caught in there. Um, so yeah, you can see on my scalar fab sliders there though, uh, from the last couple weeks of running, we've got a good amount of, of, uh, rash on those. And of course my front bumper shows all of the impacts and wear from that. The bed's getting pretty, uh, pretty worn in, beat on those, uh, those rear lights have held up well though. I mean, they've got plenty of scratches and everything on those and have hold, been holding up pretty well. Let's see. Um, what is my opinion on bevel cut gears? I don't know what you mean. It depends on what you're talking about. Um, what is the total so far? We're at 12 weeks. So 12 times 50 is, what is that, 500, $600, $600 plus the truck. So $929. Because I'm wiping out the budget from this week, even though I'm cheating a little bit. But only those of you who were able to watch into at least 22 minutes will, under know, will know that I cheated a little bit. So we'll see how long some of you guys can watch. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you for taking the time to answer questions, and thank you for all these budget. I thank you for the thank you. I uh, I do love these series. They're a lot of fun. The comments and everything are great. It's my favorite part about the videos and all that so um do you have concerns about the one piece axle housing with the built-in c hubs i've seen a lot of those broke so i did a live video before this just kind of it was supposed to be like a pre-video but i discussed this a little bit so that now you, this so the question is the new honcho has a one piece housing with the c hubs built in and if i have concerns about the durability and i addressed that a little bit in the video where i installed the new front axle shafts and mine is still doing well, but I think a huge part of it is getting the dog bones out of the axle and installing a set of universal shafts. And I didn't explain it as well as I should have in that video, but the reason is, is that, um, you know, you have the axle shaft line that goes down the center of the axle. Well, that dog bone, it's got the pins that drive that drive cup. And as they rotate, you know, they apply force to the dog bone cup that goes to the wheel. Now, when you steer, one side of that dog bone pin can come completely out of that drive cup. So then when the force of the axle shaft is pushing, it's only pushing on one side of that axle drive cup. And if you're looking at the axle shaft as a line, your force is only being pushed out here, and it's like a lever. It's giving it this tweaking force on the wheel. If you have a universal shaft, you've got the ears of the universal always pushing on both sides, one up, one down even if you're turned, however. So it gives you an equal force on both sides, and then the force is being transferred directly down the shaft. And it's just, it's something that we noticed even on wraiths back in the day when those first came with dog bones, that you would easily break C-hubs if you didn't change to universals. Sorry, that got long-winded, and it's it's a, just a long discussion. Um, so let's see. Or am I going to do a custom wrap? I've thought about it. I've thought about some paint. I just can't come up with a design that I like. And I always want to keep this thing looking 
very similar to how this truck looks right now. I like that this truck looks like a honcho that you know other people own. I want people to be able to find the video and relate to the look and appearance of this truck. I get that having a truck look completely different is fun, but if you can click on a video and the truck looks like your truck, it's a little bit more engaging to people, especially if they're people that don't understand how far you can take an SCX-10. Uh, a lot of you guys have been in it probably well long enough to completely change a car uh, you know, and understand that you can take this base awesome platform and turn it into anything you want. But some people don't have that vision and they want to click on a video and see their truck on their monitor so that they can understand what the upgrade is going to help them with. And that is why on the budget build series that are oftentimes more aimed towards the guys who maybe don't have as much experience as a lot of the guys who follow the channel, you know, typically um, it's, it's for those guys in some of those ways. So that's why I like to try and keep the look similar to stock, but you know, partial wraps, you know, taking this off, adding something down low or half of it. I, I, I want to do some, I just don't know what, I can't think of what I really want to do. What is the best RTR spec tires? What do you mean by RTR spec? Sorry, Kevin. I don't know what you mean. Um, got a list. Yeah, my, it's, I just got sand everywhere. Um, speaking of lights, would you do underglow? I'm going to say that you mean rock lights and not, not fast and the furious underglow, which I could be wrong, but I'm just going to say, uh, I like rock lights. I'm, I could do rock lights. I wouldn't be against that at all. Um, definitely be something I'd be up for. So, Possibly, yes. Uh, hey, Harley, I'm building a bummer kit for me. I saw he's fine. I recommend me. Um, if you need a medium budget servo, the ProTech 130T was one that we just discussed. I think that would be, uh, it's like 89 bucks, though. I don't know if that's medium budget. It's hard to say. Everyone has a different idea of budget. But, so, um, are you coming to Folsom Saturday for the SBG get together? Um, I don't know if I have anything else going on Saturday or not. Prob I probably will be there. Um, unless I go to the full-size rock racing out of Prairie City. I don't know that yet either. I think I'm running an F9 for front axle already. Have the rock jacks performance, if you think. Um, I, it's, it's, you know, the two diff, there are two different styles. You know, if you want to run like an F9 with an action mounted servo, I get it. You know, like that's one option that the F9 has that the Rock Jock doesn't. So, um, you know, that's there's some uh, some differences there. X, uh, no, the cat. I don't like the cast housings in any of them. Just I don't don't like them. Um, but yeah, like so, you know. And we're going to try and keep this mainly focused on the honcho, but the, the uh, bomber, bombers are tough on servos. So spending money on a bomber servo is a good idea. Um, let's see. Helical pineapple gears for the trans by, oh, um, I don't know. I just, I stay with standard gears. Just make sure that they're high quality, you know, I'm going to put incision gears in this one when it's time. I know the quality's there. I know that they stand up. I know that I stand behind them. Um, I know if anything happens, that you get it fixed. So it's, I don't know. Some things I just, I know what's going to hold up. I know that I'd stand behind it. I know that if anybody else put it in there, you know, if I suggested that someone else put it in there, I know that I would, I would say that it's a good product. Oh, RTR spec tires, any tire from an RTR. Um, man, uh, best RTR tire. Any brand or any, ugh. Uh, I mean, the Viterra K5, the Super Swampers are a pretty good stock tire. Um, RTR tires on, on a lot of axials, the compounds are just not that great. Um, I don't know. It's, it's tires are, I, I replace tire. I always want something, you know. Um, so yeah. 
Uh, I'm not going to comment on the hobby co thing. Um, I do not. I'm not a fan of of Savox servos. I don't. I don't run Savox. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, appreciate series. Give you some of the tips on Honcha. Let's see. So sorry. Let's see. Uh, so the mics are not humming. That is actually CNC machines on the other side of that wall. So they're just, that's noise that's there. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, all right. This truck in general, you know, where we're at right with it right now, there's still a lot of things to do to this. You know, we've handled... You know now tires and wheels however we do still have plastic gears in the transmission in this we've got the shocks the still the, the plastic shocks that are, are leaking badly you know they, they need some attention or a rebuild or replacing before too long uh, which we finally did address the servo I still have stock plastic knuckles on here though that's another thing that uh, probably will we'll address before too long there are some other details I'd like to add I have over the uh, last couple weeks of running lost both of the grills now it does come with spare grills and I think it also comes with spare lenses but I lost one of the lenses as well so I'm thinking that I'm gonna remove both of those though and then I might just do a two inch LED light bar in the front instead still an option haven't 100% decided there the op the the looks department I think we still need some work there but Again, we kind of I kind of discussed my feelings on that and why I'm doing some things one way versus another. We are still having good luck with uh, the new one-piece center ring gear in the axle. Might open these axles up, take a look at that. I do have a squeaky bearing, uh, the stock bearing on uh, this passenger side front knuckle, so bearings could be addressed. Now, bearings is like, it's a weird thing for this car because. Not everybody's going to need bearings when I did. So it's, you know, like saying that I need to put it in the budget build is, I don't know, necessarily the case. Uh, we might just do it to kind of help fill a week, build some budget. But, you know, I don't know that everybody needs to replace their bearings at the same time or, you know, in this progression of things like I have. Um, let's see. Yeah, the stop, like, you know, stopping leaks on stock shocks is a lot. It is. Um, the, these shocks are going to leak, so it's just kind of what I kind of have to do. Um, what does that thought on the factory shocks? They just they get the job done for a while. They hold the spring. They don't necessarily hold the oil. Um, how do I feel about the Hitex 7950, even though it is not waterproof? Hitex, I, I used to have good luck with Hitex, and I used to recommend them quite a bit. However, it seems like high tech has had some issues as of late with some with some servos. So I, d I don't know that the answer to that. I wish that I had a better um, a better feeling to say that I highly recommend them like I used to. Uh, you should do the design for the honcho that you had on the Deadbolt. Yeah, so that was something I kind of thought about. On the Deadbolt, for those that don't remember or haven't been watching my channel for all that long, I had kind of a... a a slanted half wrap it was called and it was basically just my Harley logo name like like over and over on top of each other in different sizes and things like that but on the honcha or on the deadbolt it was green so on this one I thought about doing it in the colors that they kind of used on the camo which is like sorry for that noise but it's like that light tan light green brown I think that would be kind of cool and that's the one thing that I thought about doing um, mirrors. Eh, I'm not huge on like just putting stuff on. I get that mirrors are, but I'm just going to tear them up, rip them off, and put holes in the body. So I'm going to hold off from adding things like mirrors. Uh, if you finish the, if you finish the truck now, what would you do in one weekend as far as upgrades? If I was going to like just throw everything at this thing, I would. I, I like that question. Thank you. Um, I would throw on F9 axles, front and rear, uh, for just ultimate strength. I would throw on the new knuckles, 
some new uh, some new vanquish knuckles there. Um, I think for now I'm I'm super happy with the these wheels. I think they'll be fine. So I would leave the wheels for now. Uh, ultimately, I would take the power system that's in here, that brush. I would take that all out and I would put in a brushless four pull system, uh, something around like a 3100 kV four pull brushless, either a Tekken or a Holmes. Um, I would replace the entire transmission with a, an upgraded transmission with dig. I, I really enjoy a dig. Um, so I would, I would throw that in there. Again, I would replace that rear axle as well. Um, we're still running stock rear shafts. Stock rear shafts hold up pretty well, um, but I would probably throw chromoly axle shafts in the rear just for the sake of it. I would definitely, uh, you know, throw all new crawl innovation foams in. I think that would be a huge help. Uh, I would throw on the new incision shocks. Let's see, what else could we throw at this thing? We've replaced a lot on this thing already, being this many weeks in. Um, you know, that's basically replacing everything else that we haven't replaced up to this point. So, um, so yeah, uh, Honcho plus a hundred dollars or the JK. Personally, I really like this Honcho. I just like I like the way that it looks. I like the way that you know, I like what it came with, and uh, so it's what's the best deal? What's the best bargain? Uh, that's a that's a different that's a different question. Which one would I buy? I would buy this one. So, um, have you thought about using a Holmes Hobbies servo? Their direct power. So, I actually have a Holmes Hobbies. Uh, that's the BLS V or five V five hundred five hundred V H or HV whatever it is. I have one of those, and that's in another truck that I will show you guys around the end of this month or beginning of the next. Um, let's see. So, this is a great wrap, thank you. <clears throat> Need something on the roof. I don't add, I don't like stuff on the roof. I have, I don't, I wouldn't put stuff on, you know, on the roof of my normal trail rig or things like that. So, I don't, just adding, you know, I'm not going to put scale sleeping, but, you know, if you had this truck, why would you put anything on the roof instead of in the bed anyway? So, I don't, I, 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 I'm not a fan of roof stuff. Um, is there a trick to stalling new ring gears? Um, I've never seen anybody blow up the gears. You'd have to, you know, something's up there. Um, yeah, so, I mean, some, your house, something's going on. I haven't seen gears blow up. Um, what radio do I run? So my preferred radio right now is the Fataba 4PV. Now I've got uh, 4PXs and things like that, which are nicer radios, but the 4PV is like a mid 200s range for radio price, four channel, super adjustable. Um, and I run it because I, I'm less concerned. It, accidents happen on the rocks. You fall, somebody else falls, um, you set it down, someone hits it with a truck. Someone hits my 200 and something dollar radio, for someone hitting my $600 radio, I'm a little bit less concerned. So, and it's got 95% of the features that I would even want from my 4PX. So, 4PV all day long, fantastic radio. And, and receivers can be had for like 20, 30 bucks. So it's cheap to throw them in anything. Let's see. Um, oh, just like a graphics on the roof. That makes sense. However, at the same time, Roof graphics get torn up so easy, you know? So it's like, I guess I'm on my roof too much. But um, a, a roof graphic would, would look good. It's like a nice, if I replace this hood one and the roof, you know, like a nice, like a flowing one, that might look better than like the old one I had on the sides. Um, that's a, that's, that would be something like that. I, I see exactly what you mean. Um, oh, what do I mean by a dig? Uh, so if you don't know what a dig is, a dig is a rear disconnect for your drive shaft. Basically, it's a, a mechanism that goes on the back side of the transmission that's servo operated. So you need an extra servo with a radio to control it. And it's got three positions. The forwardmost position on the dig shift lever is four-wheel drive. So all four wheels turn just like you would normally see. 
Then there's a, a middle position, which is neutral for the rear. So the rear wheel can just freely spin. When you apply power via your motor, the front wheels only spin. That's helpful in a number of different situations. But the last position all the way back, it locks the rear drive shaft into place. So the rear wheels are fixed. They cannot move. And the power is put only to the front. So when you steer on the throttle, the rear acts like a brake and it just kind of drags it. You can almost do a, a turn in the position of just that rear, you know, around that rear axle. It's extremely helpful. And it's also extremely helpful for wanting to do steep climbs in some situations. So um, digs, are, digs are cool and they're super handy and they make a truck very capable. Um, would you be a fan of a selectable T-case? If you mean a selectable T-case like a dig, then yes. If you mean a selectable T-case like a two-speed, no. I don't see any need for two-speeds. Um, would you put the incision over underdrive gears? Those are for the standard axial uh, SCX10, AR60 thing axles, not for this. Um, broke the whole circle. I've broke almost every servo. I broke $250 servos. So, you know, anything is breakable. Um, uh, you may want to get rid of the body pins. No, you know. I, body pins are simple and effective in some way. Um, I don't, you know, I run these rigs hard, you know, it's, I'm not going to run magnets and get, and let it get caught up or something like that for having a, a dark spot on the hood like this. I'm, I'm not necessarily concerned with wanting to, uh, to get rid of them, you know, with how black that area is. I don't know that it's worth the effort and the, uh, reliability, losing the reliability of something as, as solid as a body pin up there. Uh, brought a set of MIPs from Super Shafty, really nice drive shaft. Absolutely. I've ran MIPs on tons of cars. They're great drive shaft, they're big, uh, but they're strong. You know, I've broke like one MIP ever. Solid, solid drive shafts. What brand lipos do I use? Uh, currently in this car, so I'm, I'm starting to switch over to XT60 uh, battery connectors. Um, so right now in this car, I am running the Hobby Star batteries. These are from a company called RC Juice. Um, they're also sold through other places, but that's where I got them, rcjuice.com. Um, this is a 5200 milliamp. I also run their uh, 3000 milliamp. These are both 3S LiPo. So, um, I prefer the 3000 because it's a little bit lighter weight. I can keep it further back. It keeps me from having such a front heavy truck. I like it a little bit more, maybe like a 60 40 balance for weight. So uh, it's still forward, but it's not so heavy that uh, when you're going down something steep, it just always wants to come over. But I'm having really good luck with these Hobby Star batteries, and they're super affordable. Um, so. I, I highly, I highly recommend these, especially for the price. Uh, they've been a fantastic battery for me, and I, I'm liking XT60. I'm starting to switch over to that from Dean's slowly. I just like these XT60s. Um, let's see. Uh, do I, I like? I do like the uh, Protect 370 TBL. I ran that in my bomber for a little bit. I uh, had good luck with it. Um, let's see, what's my least favorite thing about this truck? That's a good question. Um, my least favorite thing. Um, so I, my least favorite thing I'm going to say is the new transmission housing. Now there's nothing wrong with it. It, it functions just fine. It, it doesn't have any issues, but like, like I was mentioning a dig, I would love to be able to put a dig in this car for the budget bill um, because I think that digs are something that people don't understand how fun they are, how cool they are, and how much they improve the performance of your car. But for me to put a dig in here, 
I've got to change the case completely, uh, buy a motor plate and gear guard setup as well. Um, you know, it's it, it becomes a very big process to change out that transmission case. Now, I get why they did it and all that, and it works fine, it functions fine, but if I was gonna say anything, that would be my least favorite thing. Um, let's see, how do you like the power plant? Power plant, I've never heard of power plant batteries. Um, uh, have you ever thought about wiring lights with a bus bar instead of individual wires? I mean, so like hooking, I imagine you're talking about trying to like create a bus bar so that you have a place to easily connect multiple setups. The only problem I would, you know, the only thing I would worry about with that is having uh, open connections possibly to be able to short out. And since you have like a direct feed to the battery, I can see issues. Um, I mean, I like the idea of like cleaning up wiring and having more flexibility, but beyond that, it's not something that, Really. What wheels are on it? These are the new incision plastic bead locks. So they're a KMC machete style. They're twenty four ninety nine a pair. So you can get all four for fifty bucks. Comes with you know they have adjustable hubs. Then the whole deal. Uh, we talked about that last week. So if you want all the details on that, you can go to the week eleven video. Uh, what are the name of the place about? Yeah, RC Juice. He's got that in there. RCJuice.com. Um. Let's see. Welcome to the 2000s on XT60s. Yeah, I mean, XT60s, I've been buying batteries with XT60s for years. Um, but everything was Dean's. I, everything else was Dean's. So it's what I ran. But I uh, I do like these, and it's just one of the, everyone else, do I, are, have Dean's actually done me wrong? No. But every once in a while I just change stuff up. So why not? Um, the top shaft is different on the new transmission. Yeah, it can be modified to work with the new, with the old one though, with a little bit of grinding on the back side. It's just one of those things. Um, the Vanquish rear axle shaft for the Air 62. I don't know what issue. We're gonna keep it to this truck though. Um, are you going to put incision ring pinion gear? Um, so in this one we got. You know, this one we've got Vanquish gears that could go in there, and I need to pull off that diff cover and see how the centered gear is working. For now, I'm not looking to change it just to change it, because if it's still working and the wear is okay, then I'm not going to change it out just because, uh, because I would also have to do a locker at the same time. So uh, I, I don't want to change them out or say that you should change them out just for the simple fact of changing it. I only want to do it if you know it then makes sense. Have I thought about new paint on the cap? We talked about that a little bit. I want to keep the cap looking very similar, just so that it's relatable to everybody. What type of problem did you experience with Savox servos? Been um, Savox servos are noisy. They're not very power efficient. They're also they have much more bloated dimensions than a lot of other brands. You know, the distance from the mounting tab to the face of the servo is much larger than they, you know, a lot of others. So they become fitment issues on a lot of different parts. Um, and in general, I just am not a fan of uh, you know some of the, the construction and the quality wise. So it's, it's just not something I don't run them. I, I don't ever and I don't plan to run them anytime in the near future. Um, foams we talked about a little bit. Crawler Innovations uh, little Novas are what I would suggest. Medium outers and uh, on the front, soft outers in the rear. Let's see. Uh, uh, so soldering. I actually use a soldering station, not just a soldering iron. So adjustable temperature and things like that. It's a track, old track power. I've had it for eight, seven years, something like that. Long time. It's done super well. Um, I got my TRX4 fixed. Yeah, they sent me gear. That was easy. Um, Kind of leery about the new axles. See, we talked about that as a little bit as well. 
Um, so far, I've had good luck with them. I think change out the shafts from dog bones to universals, you'll have good luck. But um, so that's uh, just just check that out. Uh -huh. Are you going to run bigger tires? No. I put smaller tires on this, you know, for a reason. I like the look. I think that it's fitting for this truck. Um, you know, the stance, as it articulates, it feels the wheel well pretty well. And I think that it, it looks right. It looks good. I don't think, I don't necessarily run a big tire on everything. I just run them on, you know, when I think that they're the right setup. So, no, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to run bigger tires on this one. Um, let's see. So the front bumper, this front bumper is the Scalar Fab pre-runner raised front bumper. So it, it fits the, you know, the bottom of that honcho grill better. Works out. Uh, what motor did you put on here? You can go back and look at, uh, so, you know, we've got a huge catalog on this truck with like tons of details going over all of the specific things. You know, we've got a Holmes Hobbies uh, Crawlmaster motor in here. So that, uh, you send me thank you for the donation very nice of you um i appreciate it let's see so yeah you know it's we've got a, a big catalog and i, I don't want to kind of repeat everything just because it's you know, for those that that are watching the long term may have been in it for a while and we'll uh we'll try and keep it as as progressive to this as we can I think in general though, this truck is, it's coming along and, and like we said, Matt and I are going to have to have a decision before too long about when we're going to, to call this build uh, to an end. That's, that's definitely, it's going to have some point because also the other thing is, is that we're going to start getting to a point where we've ran out of upgrades that we can do for $50 that aren't just going to be pointless upgrades for, for no reason. So I want to make sure that the upgrades that we're showing and that we're saying are like things that we would legitimately do and not just trying to find something to fill a week. And, you know, I don't want to just log on and say, I'm not doing anything this week because I need more money for an expensive upgrade and then end the video. So at some point, we're going to have to then cut the video series at least. And, uh, you know, if, if and when we – at some point, we're obviously going to do that. Uh, but we're going to have to do that, and then, you know, I will then take this bill probably to the final stage that I would like to do. Uh, I don't know that I could ever just leave it exactly where we're going to end and uh, and call it, you know, and call it a day. I, I just, I, that's not in me. I really like this truck. I really enjoy driving this truck, and I really want to then finish this truck to, you know, where I want to be. So... Um, cross bracing the shock hoops for added rigidity there's major you can't really do that you, you can't cross brace the front ones because that's where my battery goes so you can't do that you can't cross brace between the rear ones because that's where the rear bed flops down so without adding like some big weird notches in the back and uh, putting a hole in my battery I can't cross brace between them <laughs> um, so yeah maybe do a phase 2 later with a higher budget Something like that, you know, or just saying like, hey, this is the end of the $50 budget build, and now we're doing the $100 a week budget. <laughs> I don't know. I think in the end, it might just be we're ending the $50 budget build at some point, and Matt and I can then just both continue or finish, do whatever we want, and uh, we'll, we'll run them at Axial Fest. But yeah, you know, normally my budget builds, when they're just me, I don't have this drive to have this every week is I want to I want to then put out that video every Wednesday like I have for these videos at some point though I'm like out of motivation out of steam you know out of parts and at some point then I I just kind of fizzle off but now with somebody else and having that motivation of another person helping and putting so much effort into a build series as well you know I think we need to then say okay we're going to go to this point 
Um, so yeah, long-winded explanation of, of what could possibly happen in the future. But like I said, I still have other parts planned and coming for this truck, for this series still, so it's going to keep going. Um, so let's see. Um, must have put the hole in the battery. <laughs> Uh, am I going to put a winch in it? I am not going to put a winch in this truck. I am not a fan of winching, personally. Just, it's not, I don't enjoy winching myself. I just never have. I've tried it a number of times. I've done it when I, like, needed it for a scale competition. I've added them just so that I could be competitive. Um, but beyond that, I don't enjoy it. So I, I'm not going to add one. Uh, let's see. Where are we at here? Um, it's kind of like Harley Davidson. It's never really finished. That's kind of the thing, you know. Um, uh, run each other with your own rigs and then again with each other's rigs. Yeah, you know, if we're going to be at Axial Fest together. I'm sure we'll both have them there. And uh, we'll definitely, definitely get the chance to go run together. What if you guys ended on the note of the final big spending day or you spend whatever you want to do your final one or two upgrades? I think that that might kind of be something along those lines is a, is a great idea and something like what we will probably want to do. So I just don't know. Have a bi-weekly, say $50 per week. It's like, yeah, you know, that's, that's the thing. It's like, but I think part of the momentum of the budget build is that it's every week. And when it's then every other week, people forget, don't remember. You know, right now it's just like, it's Wednesday. If you're into following the series, you know that there's gonna be a video, so you can go watch it. Um, but if that's not, you know, if it's not for you, you know, you just lose some of that. So I think I wanna start strong, end strong for the series. Um, Is there upgraded trans gears in the honcho? Uh, so not in everybody's. Uh, a lot of people were lucky enough; they got the honcho out of the box from Axial with the centered metal gears that were supposed to, that came in the JK version. I think that probably what happened is the factory in Taiwan built a bunch of those transmissions for the JK with the metal gears, and a bunch of lucky honcho winners, uh, buyers, winners, a bunch of lucky honcho buyers got transmissions that they had already built for that truck, and were just like call a wash. This one was a sample. This was a media version from Axial. I was given this truck um, and it had the proper plastic gears that it was supposed to have. Uh, thanks for bullshitting with us grown men. I love talking about toy trucks. So yep, anytime. Thanks for, uh, thanks for all the comments, guys. I appreciate it. Like the video if you haven't already. We're at 58 likes. Should be more. <laughs> 59 thank you <laughs> um matt just posted it yes i got matt's uh i got matt's thing as well and on my phone it's right there so let's see um let's see uh where are we at uh what body pivot are those uh this is from um dcw it's called the flip your lid kit now there's specific ones for the Axial SCX-102 and the Axial SCX-10. So you need to make sure you get the right one um, and uh, and go from there. I, it's, I, it's a gotta have though. It makes it so nice. So let's see. Um, budget bill is a trademark. Probably is nice. <laughs> Fifty dollar budget bill. That yeah, let you. It is not, it's not technically, but I, I like that idea. Um, uh, he makes the Tupperware wheel is, look so good. They never come out that nice for me. Uh, you know, they it worked out well on this one. You know, I, everything looks better in video, though. You start looking up close and it looks like everybody else's. No, I think they came out well. Uh, you know, the only thing is now, like we talked about, it's got a little bit of a gap down here between the scalar fab sliders and those. So it's like one of those things that I might redo to try and get that back to perfect. 
Um, what are you going to upgrade? What? When are you going to go to upgrade the plastic gears inside the transmission? You know, it's like one of those things that I need to do sometime soon, but I, I haven't. They've, they've been holding up pretty well so far. The truck's still pretty light. It's running brush power, so we're doing all right. But I'll, I need to get them in there at some point. It's just like, you know, with a truck, it's like, what are you going to do? You do this, that, this, that. I blew up the servo, so I was like, okay, I've got to do the servo. Um, so I guess you and, uh, assume this would end when we go to Axial Fest. It's both rigs be compared side by side. I know what you mean, but it's like Axial Fest is a ways away, and it's just, it is hard to go, you know, that's, that's, uh, so we started this thing the first week of January, and mm -hmm. The Axial Fest would be what's it's at the end, it's the 18th. So we're looking at seven months and change. You know, you're looking at so 52 weeks in the year, over half the year, it'd be 25 plus some to get into the end. You know, it'd be like 28 weeks. At you know, I have a math degree and all, but I even I need a 28 times 50 would be $1,400 plus the 329. We had seventeen hundred and twenty nine dollars. Now I'm not saying I don't have seventeen hundred twenty nine dollars in several rigs, but at fifty dollars, that there's a lot there. That that might get slightly ridiculous. Uh, why didn't you use the extra bumper that came with the truck on the flip? Um, so you're talking about the one that is the proper fit and that was included with the kit. Honestly, it's because I didn't see it. I didn't check the spare parts bag to see that it came with the one that fit. And that is why I did not use the one that came with it to fit there. Simply because I did not see it. I did not know that it came with that until the comments started rolling in on the video, specifically telling me, hey, the right bumper comes in the parts bag. Um, any standout oh crap moment while driving the truck? Oh man, I, I mean, I drive this thing. I drive it hard. I want it. I want to try and make lines look good on video. So I'm always trying as hard as I, you know, hard lines. I've tumbled this thing so many times. I've wedged it in crap. I've just, you know, I think though, if I was thinking of one standout one, one, it was my post week four running video. Um, I was going down something and it kind of came, you know, ass over tea kettle style and uh, ended up, you know, it was just a nasty whack. Didn't look as nasty in video, but nothing ever does. It was just, it was a good one, you know, and you never know. Plastic axle housings, are they going to go? Knuckle going to go? It's so far though, as far as breakage goes, servo. And uh, I think it's been our really only breakage. And I think I should put a Tekken T8 in it. I don't think so. I've got one of those here, but no. I don't think it will. It, it won't fit without cutting my uh, battery tray. I uh, like the fact that you drive it and work on all the upgrades. I, you know, I've been I've been driving it quite a bit. So I've been trying to get as much video as I could. Really like the styrene fuel cell. I'm a scratch build. Um, yeah, I am. I am not a scratch builder. I, I, you know, I can hack my way through stuff. I can figure some stuff out, you know, with some research. But, you know, I think my fuel cell came out pretty good. But I mean, it's a fuel cell. It's not. It's nothing that crazy. Those guys that really do scratch building are crazy impressive. Um, but thank you very much. Uh, what come wheel thing that trail? What? What up come wheel that thing at trail? Um, I wheel it all the time. If you're around this area, you'll likely see it. Um, Sigil Axe has a TRX for in the future. Um, Matt doesn't even drive. So I know Matt, Matt hasn't driven his yet. He is in, Can you know, in Canada. So it is winter everywhere else. I, on the other hand, I'm in California, 
you know, and for all of the downsides that California has, it has weather. It has decent weather. I can see the snow on the mountains from my house, but I can wear a t-shirt to work in the middle of March. So, you know, it is what it is. There's some upsides and downsides. He, you know, we started this thing in January. What did we, what did we expect? <laughs> Um, one-to-one -one door edge moldings. Let's see. A minute, my trail. Oh, I'm just up the hill from Folsom. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, I didn't know that. So. <laughs> yes, I mean, Sacramento's a it's an all right place, and, and you know, everywhere has its upsides and downsides. But we have some great terrain close by, uh, and it's it's where we where we work so um, proline by the fire I will not be at proline by the fire I will be at uh, scale nationals which is in Tennessee so uh, some of the other guys from vanquish are heading down that way I'm flying out to Tennessee for scale nats so if you're gonna be in Tennessee that weekend I will see you there um, would you ever go would I ever go brushless in this? Yes, absolutely would. Um, it's what I do in everything. It's just about you know the budget in this. It doesn't just drop. It doesn't fit in super well. Otherwise, I would I would do that. How I kind of thought about is possibly going with a new Mamba Micro X, uh, which is censored, so I could put that in. It's fairly inexpensive. It would still run a brushless motor, censored brushless motor down the road, especially if I kept it reasonably light, and then I could throw in a brushless later. So. You know, one of those things. Can you put headlights in a honcho body? You can. Um, this one I don't think came with it. The older ones did come with an insert, but you'd also have to remove the Lexan paint, which it is doable, absolutely, but it does take some work. Um, I'm going to do it with the Knight's Customs Grill. We'll see that in a few weeks, probably. Um, would be cool to see aluminum panels to replace the black cage. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess, do you mean these panels? Not the, uh, I thought about some of that and it's just like, man, it's a lot of work and I, you know, trying to get something done in a week is tough. Oof. What's the best crawl spot in the North Bay other than tubes? I don't know North Bay really. I'm, you know, I'm an hour from San Francisco, hour, two hours, whatever it is. So the only place I've really crawled out in the Bay Area is Mount Diablo, which is fun. Uh, I, I think I prefer some of the crawl spots around here over Mount Diablo, but Mount Diablo is a fun spot. But I, I don't know the spots in the Bay, really. So yeah, Knight's Customs Honcho Grill eventually will be in here. Uh, I haven't decided on the a change up in, in looks yet. Let's see. Um, what brushless motor would I put in? There's lots of options. Something around 3,100 kV, sensored four pole, Holmes or Tekin. Um, I've ran the slate motors as well. They're pretty good. Uh, but I, the problem I have with the slate motors is the kV ranges. They don't like hit that number I want. You got know, like a 2850, which is okay, but then they jump to like a 3,800, which I don't like. So I want. I want 3,000 to 3,500. 3,000 is like as slow as I like to go. A 2850 is just kind of a bummer. Um, so, Tekken Rock 412, the non HD for something like this. Um, 3,100 3, kV, solid motor. Um, Holmes, it's got a 3,100 uh, 3, and 3,300 maybe that I both, I like both of those. Um, let's see. Sand ladders, eh, I, it's not not for me. Um, I, sand ladders kind of is like that winching for me. I don't like to like pull out the sand ladder and put it in place and drive up it. I just like, if I can't crawl it or hit it and clear it, I don't want to pull a little line out and hook it up or do a sand. It's just not, I don't, that's not the enjoyable part to me. Um, so that's, you know, that that's why I don't enjoy those things. I want to just drive the truck, you know. Let's see. 
two S or three S. I run three S or better in everything. Um, I, I don't. I don't run two S in anything. Uh, I don't think. Oh, that's not true. I run two S in my tiny dancer, my Tamaya dancing rider. Uh, I went and I had to go buy a two S battery for that. So that is the only thing I think I have two S in. I have one S in my uh, tiny whoop. <laughs> that's that's it. How do KVs work? KV stands for it. Basically, it means if you have three thousand, that is three thousand revolutions per volt. So your voltage of your battery. So if you take a, I'm gonna say three thousand. So you have three thousand KV. So you take that times 12.4, because that's what a fully charged 3S LiPo will read 12.4. So you take that times 12.4. That means that that motor at full RPM will be around 37,200 RPM of output. Now, in a truck like this, uh, you run, so this is a 56 tooth spur and I think like a, like a 56, 14 maybe. So 37,200. Somebody comment that number. Three, 37,200. So if you take the gear ratio of this car, so 54 divided by, I think it's 14. So that's 3.85 to 1. Then you take that times the internal ratio of the transmission, which is 2.6 to 1. Um, so then you have, now you're at 10 to 1, basically, uh, spur and pinion and transmission. So this this transmission overall is right around 10 to 1. That's with guesstimating what that pinion is. Um, so 10 to 1. And then our axles are 3.75 to 1. So we take that 10 to 1 times 3.75, and we've got an overall gear ratio in this car at 37.6 to 1. So... If you take 37.6, well, actually, you take 37,200 divided by that 37.6, and that means you have a maximum RPMs of 989 RPMs at the wheel. So that's if you're trying to then calculate how all of that works. If you wanted to take that 989, and calculate the circumference of your wheel, which is your rollout, you know, your the diameter or the distance that the wheel travels in one revolution, your rollout. You can take that times this number and you can actually get your theoretical top speed disregarding drag of any of the components. So that is how all of that plays together. But you know, you have 989. Someone Someone type 989 in the comments. So, like I was saying, that's for 3,000. So let's take uh, just 2850. So 2850 times, uh, we're at 10 to 1. Or, so 2850 times 12.4, we're at 35,340 times that 37.6 or divided by, let's do that again, because I messed that up, uh, 2850 times 12.4 equals 35,340 divided by 37.6, so you're at 939 to 1, or 939 revolutions for your wheels. So, you know, you're looking at a difference of 60 RPM at the tires, um, in that in that small number there, which it may not seem like a ton, but if you take, let's take nine eighty nine, you know, nine thirty nine divided by nine eighty nine. So you're looking at so nine point five. So that's a five percent difference in speed. You could just take and divide the two kV numbers out and skip all that math. But you know, five percent difference on that small number. Now, if you're talking 2850 to 3300, you're looking at a much bigger range. You know, you're looking at 15, 20% difference in speed. That's super noticeable. So, little things. 
I do need to go home and eat dinner and sleep. Um, you, I want to get a scale truck. What would you recommend? I would recommend an Axial SCX-102 Trail Honcho. <laughs> um, so we are an hour and 15 into this. My voice is shot because before this we did an almost two-hour live feed. I can already feel that I'm not going to be able to talk tomorrow. Um, but if we've got any more questions on the honcho, let's tackle now while I still have a little bit of a voice left. <laughs> you killed me with that calculator. <laughs> I like numbers. So much easier to do all that with a spreadsheet. You can put the stuff in there, you just type numbers, and it just exports everything you need. Yes. This build, let's see, how many weeks left? Uh, that We talked about that a little bit. I don't know how many weeks left yet. We're, we have to decide. But I really have enjoyed doing the honcho budget build. Um, you know, it's been... It's been a good one. I think the SCX-102 is a fantastic car. This car in particular lended itself really well to the budget build, um, you know, because it was a budget option from Axial, more budget. Uh, wasn't, it wasn't deadbolt budget, you know, at 300, but it was close. So that's, uh, you, know, you know, it's it, it felt well, you know, if the SCX-102 deadbolt would have come out before this, then you know I might have, I probably would have done that as a budget build. But I'm glad that this one came out so that there wasn't a confusion about which budget build was which. Because I, I, and I really do like this how this one was. Um, do I plan on changing the body? No. Um, I wish that we had shirts that I, I don't. I'm sorry. Um, are you going to change the front springs to hold it up a little? Um, so we initially changed the front springs. You know, I took the uh, stiffer ones that were in here and put them in the back, put the fronts in the back. That was because in stock form, the springs are so stiff that it, it just sits up here all the time. And then it doesn't articulate very well. Um, so that's why we changed it. Now, of course, we've added some weight to things, and it just kind of sits low. So I'm almost running it like a droop setup. And droop is not normally what I would like to run or recommend to run. But I'm running it in this one because I think it's better than the alternative, and I haven't changed the shocks yet. Um, do I get a discount when buying these trucks? So um, this, this side of... What I do is is me. It's like my Harley design side and my Vanquish side. While there's like a gray area where they where they blend together, it is separate, you know. Um, and I get I get a lot of things for you know low cost or free. Uh, this truck was given to me by Axial as a media thing. Uh, they gave me the truck to do with it what I like, and I decided to do this. Budget build. Um, Matt at SBG was given one as well for it. And I think that, you know, these videos take a lot of work. And honestly, for the amount of time and money that it takes to put into one of these, providing somebody with a truck, uh, I, I think that they get a good value out of providing me with this truck for the amount of work that I put into it. Um, is it possible to 3D print exo cage for the body? Possible, yes, of course. Um, it just would take design, somebody who likes exo cages, um, and then you know, of course, 3D printing is not the most durable, you know, situation, but it is absolutely possible. Um, any orange going to show its? I don't know. We'll see. Um, So I was here early. <laughs> I appreciate all of you guys who watched. Uh, you know, not everybody is going to watch an hour and twenty minute long video. If you did, I appreciate it a ton. For those of you that don't know how YouTube works, things like that, um, 
a click and watching a video for five seconds. It doesn't, it doesn't, that's not what counts. Uh, while that's what shows in the bottom, view count is not what matters. It's watch time. So when you guys watch the videos through, that that helps me tremendously. I appreciate it very much. Um, and, you know, it's what, it's what helps grow. You know, of course, sharing videos, you know, all that, subscribing, I, all of it's awesome. Watch time is huge, though, and I appreciate all of you guys who spend, spend uh, you know, a part of your day watching it. So it's all of it is pretty awesome. I, I love doing the YouTube stuff for the, the interaction and all that. Um, and, you know, thanks everybody who watches. It's if nobody watched, I wouldn't do it. That's all it is. So oil recommendations for the stock shocks, um, whatever you don't mind cleaning up off of your bench because it's going to fall out. So, <laughs> um, I at work getting paid to watch. Yes. Um, it's here for both streams. <laughs> Let's see. Um, <laughs> thanks, Josh. You always make it fun, except for the calculator. <laughs> ah, perfect. Uh, what is your thought on putting a honcho body on a bomber? Um, so, you know, a lot of people have put bo bodies on the bombers, and some people have done it pretty well, made it look pretty good. Um, Chris Hemistorm, I think, does a great job with a lot of things. He put that old Ford body on his. Thought it looked pretty good. Personally, though, I am like an I'm an Ultra Four fan. I'm a full size Ultra Four fan, and those rigs don't run that type of body normally. They run minimalist metal panels for maximum visibility. So that's what I like. That's what I prefer. Um, I also don't like when tubes don't perfectly follow the lines of a body that they're built for. So that's the other thing that bothers me. Like putting this body on a bomber, it's like. Well, the A pillar in the top isn't going to match. I'm like, that That would drive me insane. I can't. One thing that almost drives me too insane on this car as it is, is that my driver figures from the bomber interior sit far back. I mean, they're basically in the extended cab portion of the truck. That bothers me. But it's like, you know, half the time those little extended cab things are completely worthless anyway. So, you know, maybe that's how a real Toyota would be. I'm kind of okay with that. Kind of. Um, I was here the whole time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, bomber budget build yourself. Perfect. I think it works out pretty well. Um, <laughs> probably be late to work tomorrow, but it was worth it. <laughs> uh, until a machine breaks. Then. Um, I appreciate you watching. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone who, who's commenting. Um, give us the last flex shot so we can have our last drink. <laughs> the, the the drinking. There you go. Um, how long uh, is the wait on a ripper? Right now, it's like mid to late April. So do you ever do giveaways? Uh, I did several giveaways during this series for like little things here and there that I was using or making. Um, but like big giveaways, not usually, um, it's just one of those things, you know, YouTube doesn't exactly pay a ton. So most, all of the money I get from YouTube goes right back in YouTube for camera gear, you know? And so my normal camera that I use for YouTube is this guy. It's a Canon DSLR SL2 Rode Video Micro, um, I use a tripod. I've got a big diffusion light there. I've got a ton of stuff. You know, video stuff is expensive. This laptop is three thousand dollars. You know, it's all of it is expensive. So, and then you know, I need content for a channel, so I've got to go buy. I went and bought the TRX4 kit. I just went and bought that. I bought that at a hobby shop here locally, uh, RC Country here in Sacramento, which is an amazing hobby shop. Um, they got it in there. I went and bought it there. So, and then I sold it, but I still had to buy it. So, you know, um, would the new Ford body for the Ascender work for this truck? I don't know that. Um, Ascenders have like kind of some weird proportions in some ways, and I don't know how the width. I just don't know. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. 
Um, is there ever discounts um, that you get when using or buying a lot of gear? Like for, I don't know, I don't know 100 percent what you mean there. Sorry. Um, Will Axial ever make another one eight scale? Oof. I would get, I, if I was a bet, I think like I'd have to put a time limit on it so that I could have the end of a bet. But if we're talking five years, I would, my money would be on the no side. I would, I would wager a substantial amount of money on the no side. Um, as much as I would love to see a solid axle bomber, um, you know, true proportioned well you know i just i the yeti xl was not a success you know it just i don't think it was i don't think it, it didn't sell it didn't sell well had you know had some of those issues and things like that um in the big picture with how many how many units of a vehicle are needed to sell to really pay off um it was not a success sorry i'm sorry walking around Anyway, um, so anyway, um, a mechanic or X Max snap on tool van. Um, X Maxes and things like that. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> Um, thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, Shane, I'd have to, I'd have to field that at another time. Um, the ultimate desert truck seems to be taken off. I, I think that the, you know, I know that's not honcho based, but I will say that I, that haunt the, uh, that rig does seem to be taken off and it, but it, it also looks like it's going to be a, a good performer worked well. Um, so. Yes, the bomber and the BDI. The bomber's still there. The BDI is on the other side of this wall. It'll get finished here before too long, I think. Um, so yes, that's that's kind of where we're at. My voice is shot. I'm using all of it up that I've got. That's uh, I would have to run out, grab it, bring it all the way back. But anyway. Um, that's uh, that's all I got. I think I, I talked straight for like three and a half hours. Yeah, when someone jumped in, it's scary. Yes, partially that, partially just there's homeless around, and they're just you never know. But I am going home. I'm hungry. I still haven't eaten dinner, but I did get away without having to edit the video. It's nine forty one my time here, and uh, that's what we got. This was a fun version of the Honcho budget build. Anybody who watched one hour, 28 minutes, probably an hour and a half by the time this is over, um, thank you. I appreciate it. Always fun. I love the live stuff. I'm glad that YouTube updated the live features to what we've got now so that I can live stream directly from my laptop much easier than using the old encoder setup. Ugh. This setup is awesome and legit. The comments are awesome. The comments now stay with the video. So all of you guys who are watching it later, you can turn on and go to the chat, see the live chat stuff. So much more interactive, so much better. Um, it's just everything. I'm, I'd be so much more inclined to do Facebook, so much more inclined to do YouTube live now that the live chat stays with it because I think the YouTube side is so much better than the Facebook side. So. Thank you all. I appreciate it very much. I'm going to go home and uh, I will see you guys all next time for the other one. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.